Hello, welcome back to my channel, or just welcome back to my recent random hyperfixation. Today I'm going to document the beginning of my composting bin. I just bought a plastic bin from Walmart that can fit under my kitchen sink, and I got some worms from the bait shop across the street. Red wigglers. They're hiding in here. I found some cardboard around my house that I realized like, oh, this would be really good for composting. The cardboard cores of uh, like toilet paper or like the bottom of like Gatorade uh, containers. Anyways, before I keep rambling on too much, let me talk about what I've learned about composting so far. I rent this home that I'm in, so I can't really compost outside. So I wanted to try composting inside for the first time. So from what I understand, composting in general, whether inside, outside, whatever, you're gonna want brown materials, green materials, water, and air. For green materials, that's gonna be things like produce scraps or like literally green leaves that I found outside, or like these flowers that have now wilted that I bought for my fiance. And then for brown materials, you're gonna want things like cardboard, newspaper, sawdust, stuff like that. And then just regular old water and uh, air. Now, you're probably thinking, composting smells nasty. Why are you gonna keep this inside? Well, in order to contain the stench, I bought a bin that is specifically sealable which makes me wonder how I'm gonna get air in there. What I'm gonna do is probably open it every one or two days or whenever I need to put new stuff in it and kind of just churn it uh, to uh, introduce air in there and that should be good. We'll see, I don't know, I'm new to this. Um, just another tip that I've been reading about and hearing about, you don't want too much water in a container like this or else the moisture will sink to the bottom and it will just turn like nasty and smelly and rotting. But you want a little bit of water because that's what makes worms happy. They like moist, dark environments. So it's like a balance. So just as a quick rundown of the materials I got, just super quick. My greens, my browns, soil, worms, water, and bin. I think we have a nice little worm house going. I made sure it was moist, but not oversaturated. I even um, watered the bedding down a little bit, the brown, the cardboard. Uh, I mixed everything in there, tossed it like a salad. Some people say to layer. Um, I'm not really sure the significance behind that. I think that may be more important to outside composting. I don't actually know, don't take my word on that. My thought process is if the worms are living in here, you know, um, they're already in a dark, nice space. They're not really going to need the bedding for like protection or anything like that or to keep the sunlight out. So I kind of mixed it all in there with the green and everything. It looks like a nice little worm home if I do say so myself. So without further ado, let's introduce the worm guests. It says there are 30 live worms in here. I'm squeamish when it comes to worms. I'm the idiot that decided to compost. Um, but I think I'm just gonna dump them in there, maybe help them get in the soil a little bit. And then I'm just gonna, once they're settled in, stick it under my uh, sink. And then next time I need to compost, I'll just pull it out and add some green. I have a lot of brown material left over. I have some substitute green material. I got some green leaves outside. Um, so I'm good on brown material for a while, so. These worms are going to be living nice and comfortably underneath my sink. 
Okay, little wormies, please be nice to me. I'll be nice to you. Ooh, ooh, babe, babe. Let's see if I can help them out here. I don't want to hurt them. Let's use some bedding. Emma, unclump. It's okay. You got room now. I made you a nice little worm home. Come on. Worm home. Worm homies. Worm roommate. Yeah. Look at him. Squirming around. Okay, I'm not gonna subject them to the light any longer. We're gonna seal up my little worm home here. Wait, how are they gonna breathe? Huh? How are they gonna breathe? I don't know. Oh, I'm stupid. Day one of checking on the compost. The worms were trying to escape, which is an indicator to me that there is either too much food or not enough air or something's, something's amiss, right? So we decided maybe there's not enough air. So I'm thinking it's air, so we poked more holes in the sides and on the top, and hopefully that will give the worms more air. So day two of checking the compost. I have moved it from underneath my sink to out in the open just to get better airflow. And when I went to check it this morning, uh, I found this worm on the outside, which indicated to me still something was wrong trying to escape or something like that. So I helped him back in the bin. And later here, you'll see me digging around with that spoon, trying to look for worms. If this was a healthy compost, the worms would be on the top and it wouldn't be hard to find them. So that indicated to me that something is still not well with the compost. Whether the dirt is too wet or the house that I'm in is too warm, maybe there's not enough soil. So I went and bought more worms. We're going to move the box outside and then at night we're going to bring them inside so they don't freeze. And my fiance added more soil to hopefully add to the soil versus green and brown material ratio. Also might help make the soil a little less moist. Day three and checking all of the worms, they are dead. So I have officially killed two batches of worms and talking with some friends online, we've discovered that it's not uncommon for bait shops to advertise red wigglers when in actuality they are not red wigglers. So I tried to look for something at Home Depot that could tell me the pH level. I was thinking either that could be an issue and or that these are actually not red wigglers and that's why they are dying. So I looked up some local places in my state that raise red wigglers and I ordered a batch online. You can see me digging in here because I'm trying to find the dead worms. I, I just would like to at least, you know, confirm that they are dead. Uh, I don't know, maybe make them a little worm graveyard or something. And also you don't want to keep dead worms in the soil. I'm pretty sure that other worms would eat them, but I also don't think it's good for them. And here were a few I had found. <sighs> Poor wormies, I'm sorry. My new wormy friends arrived in about two days and I ordered them from Ozark Worm Farms LLC. They are a local farm in Arkansas and they sent about two containers of worms so you can see me here opening them. I wish I had gotten it on film but one of them seemed to contain completely dead worms. The other one maybe half of them were alive but I put them into the compost. Here are some that look sort of not so great, but I found one little guy who was moving around and even after filming this I was able to find some more that are moving around since being introduced to the dirt. 
Hello, this is Future Barry with an update. By the time I'm recording this voiceover, it's been about a week and a half since I started this composting project. This footage that you're seeing here is on day six, so the worms still look kind of sluggish, but I promise they're doing a lot better now. They're a lot more happy. I'm able to read the compost better. I have a little bit more information under my belt and they're actually eating what I'm putting in there. So that's exciting. Let's do one more update on the compost. It's been about a week and a half now. I just wanted to prove to you guys that the worms are alive and happy. See how they're on the top of the dirt and they are instantly reactive. They move down into the dirt when I uncover it. They're angy. So I covered them back up to be nice. And yeah, I have a happy little compost and thank you all for being on the beginning of this journey. Thank you for watching.